So we're going to talk about Mason City tonight. So I've got a couple maps here to get you oriented. This is north central Iowa. You can see Mason City here, and you get all kinds of rail lines coming in and out. Uh, of course, my focus is Minneapolis and St. Louis, which ran up here on the east side of Highway 65 in through Mason City and on up north to Manly, which is up here at the top of the map. The Milwaukee Road came across along the south side of Mason City, east-west line. But, and then they also had the line coming down out of, what was that, um, Austin? Yeah. Yep, they came in here at an angle. Then you get Chicago Northwestern coming across and then they angle out to the southwest. You have the Rock Island and the Great Western coming in from the north. And they all cross over here with the Northwestern on the west side of town. And then the Great Western goes off this way and the Rock Island goes down down this way. Um, and then you have this uh, thing that's called the trolley, the Mason City and Clear Lake in my time period, later the Iowa Terminal that ran between Mason City and Clear Lake. And then they came up here and interchanged with the Milwaukee and Emmons St. Hill in this location. And they interchanged with the other railroads over in, in this area somewhere. So let's take a, a little bit more of a, here's a more of a stylized map. This is from an Emmons St. Hill detour, but gives you a, a clear idea of Mason City proper, how the Emmons St. Hill came through, angled across and down, the interchange with the Milwaukee right here. And, the interchanges that Milwaukee had with the Great Western, Rock Island, and Northwestern. So, and then this stylized map over here is one that Clark put together a number of years ago, showing the M and St. L um, track and the locations and what they were called with the, the deep depot area, middle yard here, and of course the Decker meatpacking plant, the joint yard up here for the sugar beet plant and the cement plants, and then the interchanges with the Milwaukee and the um the trolley. So anything to add, dear Clark? No. no. Okay. Okay. This is a map I have. This is an early map of Minneapolis and St. Louis through Mason City. This is from 1916, the Decker Meatpacking Plant. And you can see how it comes down. Yeah. And then angles across the depot and some industries and the engine service areas were right in here. This, Roundhouse there and depot was down here and then it curves down. Middle yard was right in here. This is the interchange with the Milwaukee. And then there was another yard down here called the Albert Lee tracks. And here's the trolley coming in the interchange. The scale house was down here. Here's that Austin line from the Milwaukee. And this was called Mason City Junction down here. It was a small depot that sat down here as well. So here is um. Oh, this is a map of the uh, joint yard of, for the cement plants uh, where the M and St. L came in from the east end and Great Western came in from the west end. And see, this was the, the silos there for storage of what was that cement, Clark? Yep. Yeah, this is Lehigh Portland cement and they had a yard scale and so on. And if I understand correctly, the M and St. L shoved in cars here and then the Great Western and whoever else would take them out and work the cement plants, is that correct? Uh, no, the MSA now would work both cement plants, the Great Western. Uh, it They kind of, sometimes the Great Western, uh, the Rock Island would switch off. Uh, they all bring stuff up from the Milwaukee. This trackage here mostly is all still there and still active. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and then here is a, a photo. This is a map of the um, one of the cement plants, Lehigh. 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 Yeah. So, and you here you can see the Great Western. This is that curve going down into the um, yard that we just showed you was east of there, and then and then north of here was the um, sugar plant, and then there was another cement plant south of there. So this is a, a portion of that Emmons and Ale map showing the Decker meatpacking plant from 1916 or so, 1917. Uh, a lot of buildings got added, but the tracks pretty much remained the same. 
this was the main line down here. And then we'll, you know, we'll, we'll keep moving along here. This is a Emmett St. O map showing the roundhouse area and some changes that were being proposed. You can see a 66 foot turntable, a five, five stall roundhouse, and then they build an engine house here out of cinder blocks. So this gets interesting down at the south end. This is the interchange with the, with the Milwaukee. And then here you can see a more detailed uh, close up of the um, M and St. L and the, and the trolley transfer, which was these tracks down here and the direct interchange. And then in, this, in the triangle that was formed here, this is where the uh, Union uh, Refrigeration Transit Company had their repair facilities. Is that correct, Clark? Uh, General American. General American, well, the Union, Union American generally, uh, they were all the same. So, <laughs> they, so. And we saw some interesting trains in Mason City. So. And they get some orders. There's an early Mason City and Clear Lake unit. Here's a little bit later one. Notice the stock cars and refrigerator cars. So they're handling traffic that would be going to or from going to Deckers probably with the stock cars in the front end. Here they are over at Clear Lake. Picking up bathers or dropping them off. And they are moving some refrigerator cars. This is traction motor 54. And there's traction 54 again. I don't know if these are soft photos or not. Do you know, Clark? No, I have no idea. Yeah. Doesn't matter. That's Here. tough. I know his photos. That's one. Yep. Yep. It used to be all the rail fans would eat at McDonald's and watch the trolley go by, but that McDonald's is now gone, isn't it? It's a Mexican food restaurant, and the McDonald's has moved about a few blocks south, and they took that that sign with them. And it's back behind the place, but the speedy quick guy with the 15 cents is gone. But the <laughs> arches and the rest of the sign. When I was a kid, we were always say if we ever inherited a lot of money, we'd buy enough hamburgers to make McDonald's change their sign. <laughs> so, okay, now here's some stylized line drawing maps showing some of the different track areas. And uh, this is showing, this is the area they called the bear trap. This is um, where those west side lines all came in together and then separated again. Northwestern going off that way. The Gray Western and Rock Island going off down through here. The um, trolley lines crossing. And um, this lower one is showing, that's showing the cement plants and the, sugar beet tracks and uh, this is the northwestern yard over on the west side of mason city so as you can see there was a lot of railroads in this town with a lot of activity and and there was a lot of industry so kind of one of those things that we often overlook so this was this is the tower do you know uh, where this there were a couple of towers, three towers in town. I have no idea, or maybe four. I don't know which one that one is. Uh, it doesn't look familiar. Okay, yeah, I don't remember. It's a, it, it was could be. It could be what you're looking at is the the northwestern here in front, and the Great Western on the back, and then 12th Street where they and where they crossed would be to the north or to the right. Or okay. it could be the other way around, and they would cross on the left. Yeah, but that uh, would be my guess. I think I have a picture somewhere with that tower in it. I'll have to. I don't know if it'll come up in what I'm going to show, but sure. Uh, well, that's my I, guess. Yeah, and this is a uh, some uh, 
uh, Mason City interlocking with the Milwaukee and the Northwestern, and then the um, Mason City and Fort Dodge, which was later the Great Western. Um, there's details on that, but here's here's the interlocking plat diagram for the that tower. If it's the same, yeah. So, and then here's a couple of interior shots. That's called Clear Lake right. Junction. This those is Clear Lake Junction. Yeah, those are slash slides. The uh, uh, Dave this. Johnson, who was owner of the trolley, um, who sold it to Progressive Rail, his dad used to work in there. Ah, okay. Ah, uh, so. I, I just, you know, noticing the different colors and all the levers here. So, <laughs> of course, with all those different roads, you had different depots. That's the Northwestern's depot. This is also another later shot of the Northwestern depot. And that, that probably is the Northwestern depot again, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That was a division point. That's the, why they had the two-story building. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. The this only part that remains is that that little bit on the end there. Yeah. Where uh, the stack is, that, that freight house. I'm, I'm getting mixed up here. Okay. This is the Milwaukee's Depot. Yep. And it's still standing, is that correct? Possibly. I haven't been down there in a while. They were... <laughs> they maybe have torn it, torn it down by now. It doesn't take a lot to tear stuff down. Yeah, I know there's been talk about tearing it down. So it's, yeah. There's that Northwestern one again. I don't know why I got so many pictures of it. This is the Great Westerns. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. And then this is Clear Lake Junction. Yep. Yep. Here's the M and St. L Depot. Backside M and St. L Depot. You'll notice there's a trolley loop there. Yes, that's right, behind there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then here's the new depot they built in 56 to replace that wood depot. And this was torn down, what, a year or two ago? Yeah, probably longer ago than you think. Yeah, probably so. Yep. And this is what the M and St. L did between the, the two depots. <laughs> they parked the car there. So. This is a shot, 1961, looking north from that depot area. You can see the turntable, and the pit, and the two two stall engine house, and the train coming into town. Here's a shot looking south. The, the coaling tower, you can, is this the turntable pit right over here? Yeah. Yep, and then we get the, the depot off in the distance and the farmer's elevator, et cetera. Here's another shot from about the same location showing the roundhouse and the water tank. That's a Bill Armstrong photo. The last one was too. Yep. And there's, there's the engine house in four days. That's still standing, isn't it? Uh, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Interesting it's buried story in trees, about, if it's still there. Yeah. The interesting story is that the floor, when it was built, was a dirt floor. And there's a con concrete batch plant right behind there. And every time they came back with a little concrete in their truck, they'd back it into the north, north end of the engine ho house and empty it out. And the, Local railroaders would slowly finish the floor. They did it patch by patch. <laughs> so, uh, okay, here's a, here we see looking at the yard there near the depot. Just, this is just north of the depot, if I recall. Yes, Midland. that'd be looking north from the depot. Yep, Midland Wholesale there. And then you can see a truck back there was a ramp over here for unloading flat cars and things. So, and this is that elevator and the farmer's elevator, Perina Chow's structure. 
this was this was red star oil and then here's that those elevators and this is the this was a restaurant for a while it was an insulation company for a while it was all kinds of different things in this building so it was originally a, a white rose gasoline and where those save silos were there were some uh, fuel tanks oh yes okay wow. and right now that building is gone and i think all the silos are there but there was a storm and one of them has lost its roof aha uh -huh. okay and this is the south end of the depot area this is what bridge over lang creek willow creek willow creek yeah it's okay I know I know there's a great photo from Slough of this bridge with the Emmons and Hill engine on it, but yeah, that's the this is his photo too. Okay, good. And about where the photographer is, is standing is where this building was located, which at one time was Mason City Hyde and Fur and later was Hoxie Fruit. Mm -hmm. It's been some several different companies. It's still there. Yeah, the building is still there. Okay. Yeah, here's a here's a later version of it. So. And then here was another building in, in Mason City, the International Harvester Company's warehouse. I just selected random photos, so we're just kind of going through. Uh, here's an aerial photo. You can see there's a lot of different things. Here's a Freight house. I think this is this the Northwestern's freight house. Uh, no, that's the Milwaukee's. The that's, Northwestern's yeah. freight house is across the street from Western Grocer. Yes, and, and the Rock and, Island one is up in the upper right-hand corner. You can see their emblem on the end of the white, light-colored building. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. There's the Rock Islands there. Matter of fact, I think the Northwestern one, looking at it, is directly behind the thrashing machine company uh, with smoke cover and part of it. Yep, right in, right in here, yeah. So, and this is the Western Grocer Building, Jack Spratt Foods, so. Now, the reason that corner of the building is like that is the trolley used to bring coal hoppers down to the power plant and their their curves were so sharp that the cars would overhang. So when they built this building, it was built this way for clearance for for uh, hopper cars. Yeah, and you can see that building right here. You can see how that angled. Yeah. So, yep. Too quick with the button here. So, well, now let's let's see. Now we got some more aerial photos. A newspaper in Mason City did a great job of doing aerial photo stuff from time to time this is one of the cement plants yeah you're looking at decker straight in upper upper middle yeah and this would be northwestern states and the rail line you see going under the great western yard um would be to uh limestone quarry yep you can see a couple of steam shovels that work in here and at one time they had a shea that they used in some of these quarries for moving the rock into the cement Yeah, I may have a photo of that show. Yeah, so. Well, I have photos, but I don't know if I, they're going to show tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Now here's, this is another photo of a cement plant. Same plant. Same, same plant, Northwestern States, yeah. Yeah. Yep, yeah, so. And then at the south end of town, south of the Bear Trap area, was Brick and Tile Works. There were several of those companies. Is that correct? Yeah, I think there were seven different. They were all under the same name, May, uh, May City Brick and Tile. But they, there were seven plants all by separate. Mm -hmm. You can see all the tile lined up there, drain yeah. tile. Yep, and all the all the kilns and the stacks and yeah. So uh, let's see, that's an aerial photo showing what the cement plants. Yeah, that's that? Lehigh and that's that 
that little circle there in the middle of this, they're, they're building those silos that you showed pictures of earlier. And the only thing that's there now is the joint yard right just to the right of the, of the street there. And yep. you can see some hopper cars lined up on it. And yep. that's how you, there's a track that goes from that yard across into Northwestern states and goes across Calamus Creek. That's how the M and St. L would get in there and uh, after they widen the highway. Okay. So we got Northwestern states here on the left side of the photo. Yep. And this is Lehigh, Portland right up here. Yeah, straight ahead. And then out of the photo over here would be the American Crystal Sugar Plant. Yeah, to the right. Yep. So, and there's the American Sugar Crystal Plant. Mm -hmm. And these are all piles of sugar beets waiting to be processed. Most people don't realize that Northern Iowa at one time raised a lot of sugar, sugar beets. And the sugar beets got forced out once soybeans became a cash crop. So, and here's a map of the sugar beet plant with the tracks coming in. And this was all served by the Great Western, Chicago Great Western, correct? Yep, yes. Yep, okay. And as notice it says sugar warehouse up there. Well, here's a photo of the inside of the sugar warehouse. That's all uh, beet meal. Yep. I remember when I was a kid and in grade school, we went out there on Boy Scouts for a tour or maybe from school from a tour. I remember going in that building and seeing those bags stacked to the ceiling. That was impressive. It's <laughs> nice that you got a picture of it. Well, it says beat Paul right there on the bags. Yeah, yeah. No, it's an impressive photo. Just, uh, yeah, so. And here's another aerial photo showing, okay, there's the towers that were built. These were built in the 50s with that yard. And here's cement plant and cement plant. Now we're looking southeast and the Decker plant is back back down in here somewhere. So yeah. here is, um, this is Mason City Junction again. You can see the, and then here is the Decker meatpacking plant. This is photos from 1934. So, of course, the Decker meat, they had their own refrigerator cars at one time. Here's another photo of the meatpacking plant in the late 40s, early 50s, showing the office building and the slaughterhouse building. And then this is, I believe, the cooling beef cooler out here. And then you can see the walkway coming over from the hog warehouse into the slaughterhouse. So, and here's a photo, an early photo of some workers at the Decker plant. You can see Jacob Decker and Sons printed on the wooden box here, pork lines that they're loading up, it looks like today. So, here's a shot from the um, entrance into the meatpacking plant. This is from the Behringer collection down in St. Louis, but here is the, here's the hog hotel and the hog sheds here. This is the um, pre-cooling shed that Armour built after they bought the plant where they would pre-cool the refrigerator cars before they were shoved in to be loaded back in here. And so you can see there are quite a few tracks coming into this plant, so. And this is the famous bridge that leads into it. And what, what's interesting about this bridge is we get Main line and siding. We've got a, a, a turnout on here, and we got a, a switchback, and then we get a crossing, all being built on top of a bridge. And you know, it used to be when you're a modeler, you're told you just don't do stuff like that. Here's a, an example of the railroad doing it. So, and Clark, I think at one time built a model of that. Yeah, originally this was a uh, crossing at grade. And then they built the underpass and they just left the tracks the way they were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it took them 10 years because they planned to do this and then World War II hit and they had to delay it for about eight years, but it got done. So now another industry in Mason City was state brand creameries. This had the largest butter churn in the state of Iowa. And you can see it was worked by the trolley and they had their own um, refrigerator cars. And uh, 
branch line at one point did this car. So it was a Northwestern lease car with a very colorful logo on it. So other than Mason City and Clear Lake also had some cars they leased from Northwestern. This was for S. Kennedy Jr. vegetables, it looks like, Red Globe Farms. And of course, back to the sugar beet plant. There's another shot of it. Here's a cement hopper getting loaded with cement at one of the cement plants. So and I know this lettering here was a one time offered by um, Wabash decals, uh, Mark Vaughn. I don't know if those are, are those Gary Rowe now doing those, Clark? Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, this set, this particular set was offered by Harold King and uh, Vaughn did serving the grain industry. Oh, that's uh, right. Yeah. For the three bay hoppers. That's right. I forgot. Yeah, I got them mixed up. So, but yeah, this anyway it shows you how they loaded the cement hoppers there. So, now another distinction in Mason City is. The surviving M and St. Old steam locomotives on display in the park. This is an earlier photo before it was um, fully restored uh, in a uh, nice looking condition with a roof put over it. But you can go out there to Eastside Park and and take a look at an authentic M and St. Old steam engine. So let's see what else I got here. Ah, sugar beet piles. We got the beet loader here making the piles and we got a farmer's brought in his truck and dumped them and then here is i actually have three shots this is the west shot and then a middle one and east one i'm just going to show you the one of all the guns and hoppers coming in with sugar beets for the in the fall campaign this is and this plant ran what clear up into the late 70s 1980 it's yeah they're still use it as a warehouse yeah Part of it's been torn down, but part of it's still there. Mm -hmm. So, and here's a a shot of there's those silos and the, that joint yard. There's the Rock Island going across overhead, and this is looks like a Northwestern engine bringing covered hoppers into the cement plants. So, is that a soft photo? Yeah. Usually, what happened, and this would probably be by the light in the evening and the Rock Island train would tie up in uh, Manly and they would come down in the morning, do their switching and go back at night. So with this guy is an X7 St. L engine, what they're probably doing is collecting all of the, the car loads from Lehigh, putting them with the car loads from Northwestern, then they'll run a special train up to the Twin Cities every, every evening. Okay. Uh, uh. This is back when the railroads cared about customers. <laughs> yeah. So, well, here's another shot of the brick and tile operations. They made a lot of clay tile and, of course, drainage tile up there. And um, a lot of structures in Northern Iowa were built with clay tile. So, and here's another shot of the brick and tile works of some sort. This is a photo of Northwestern States Portland cement silos. And this this is an aerial view of, this is the Mason City Milwaukee yard. Milwaukee stock pens were down in here, but this shows the interchange with the trolley and the M and St. L coming through. And then this right in here was where General American had their repair um, spot for repairing refrigerator cars and tank cars before they went up to the Decker plant. And these are all, the, this was all south end of town, so. And this is at the very south end of town. This is the Swift Fertilizer building. Is that correct, Clark? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but I just added this to my layout with the new expansion. So okay. we got more, more tracks to switch. Imagine that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's interesting here is I asked, uh, a friend of mine what they would get in and he would say well they would get in potash from new mexico and that boxcar sitting there you can't tell in this photo but it's a santa fe boxcar 
Oh, okay. And they would also get in potash from Canada and sulfate, sulfate from uh, uh, Florida. Mm -hmm. They well, also had liquid uh, ammonia. They call it just ammonia, not anhydrous in, in those days, but they had tanks for that too. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I know what to switch in there. Thank you. Yeah. So, and then I just got two slides left. This is one of uh, a drawing of Clark's earlier layout of Mason City. So just a, wasn't a giant layout, but it really captured the flavor and feel of what was it in Mason City. So, and then here's a photo of my model of Mason City with the Decker meat plant at the far end. And I just have one yard instead of several. And then of course those unique silos with the tops. And that's what I've got, Greg. So now Clark is going to share. Very nice. Thank you, Doug. Okay, back. This is what, um, this is before Doug showed this in a more modern when it was, a, a, had been a restaurant. Uh, you can see where it says White Rose Gasoline on it. And then it's uh, uh, John Mansfield insulation at this time. Now, let me see. Can you see the next one? Yep. Yes. Okay. That. What that is is a kind of a zoom in on the on the uh, the looks uh, like an oil unloading for Red Star Oil. Okay. Yeah. Now this one you can see the the newer depot here, Red Star Oil over here, and this is that standpipe. There was a track. Well, there's actually now when they put this depot in, there's two tracks behind there, but one of them is for Red Star. So I think we're good now. You're seeing these pictures? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. This one is, uh, uh, what the hell is this? Oh, okay. This is, what we're looking at here is this is the North, this is the Great Western Rock Island. This is the Northwestern. This is the Milwaukee. And this is one of the uh, brick and tile buildings plants this is the there remains of this thing still here because this is a cemetery and there's they put a road in a, a four-lane road that comes through here nowadays anyway on to the next okay this is uh, a tire uh, for northwestern states they built a new uh, assembly line in the middle 60s and this would be a tire for the kiln, and it's on a special Alice Chalmers car. Wow. And they they obviously had two cars because here's another tire coming in. Wow. And then this is an aerial shot of downtown. Uh, this earlier, we, we looked at, the, this is the Rock Island Freight House down here. Uh, Decker's is up here. Uh, and this is the downtown area. Um, the M and St. L where that depot and everything is, is right here, where their depot and, and engine house is. Engine house is back here. Hold on, the next. By this now route at uh, Allied Mills. This would be on the south side of Allied Mills, their truck load out. And this is still a further way of view. You can, this tower is so tall, you can see this thing from six, eight miles away. Mm -hmm. This is their first load out of there. Um, 19, uh, March 19th of 1954, going to Minnesota. Uh, here's bags of feed inside. Notice the, the pallets that they're on. And here's a little forklift at that time, moving the stuff around. Uh, another picture of the south side. Uh, where they've got trucks backed up for loading uh, bags into. This other place over here would be for loading bulk, these guys. These are where they would load the bags. This is the rail side just after it's built. It hasn't been painted yet. Closer view of that. There's the Milwaukee pushing cars back in there. 
Uh, this would be their unloading area right here. So they've set these cars in here. These cars, they're probably pulling. Some of them may be pulled. Some of them may be going to go back over here. Closer up shot. This uh, shows their bagging operation. Uh, you can see over here, the bags are being filled with feed. Then here, they'll sew them shut. Then right here, they'll drop off this conveyor and go downstairs and eventually get loading in, into the back of a truck or a rail car. But here they are coming off the, the, the chute, coming down from where they were stacked. And then these, uh, these odd looking pallets, they were stacking them on there. <laughs> this is how they unloaded uh, box cars. This is a New Haven car, by the way, an orange one, as you can tell. Um, this was an electric uh, end loader. And then we're right, right in front of the front wheels and behind the bucket is uh, a hopper with a uh, grates over the top. And they would go in and, and slide the push, pull the grain out and, or whatever they were getting in. And it would fall down in the hopper, and get transported to the plant. This is a ready mix facility. And we lived uh, within a stone's throw of this place when I was a kid. Here's that this is it from the other end when it was first being built. The truck off the snail coming in here. These are down by the Milwaukee yard. You can see the Milwaukee yard over here, Milwaukee caboose. Uh, these were early batch operations for concrete. You can see the early concrete trucks here. Well, that's that one again. This is a later view. I don't, if, I'm gonna see if I can zoom in on this because this is, this is kind of cool. Yeah, I can. It's been too far. We're gone. I hit the wrong button. Back we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's right up there with the, uh, the share. Well, what I'm going to get at is over here, you can see this. There's a silo right here where they would put the cement in, and there's a screw underneath the tracks here. I, I've got pictures of it. I don't know if they'll show up on here. But you can see they've got a truck, a flatbed truck, and they've got bags of cement, and they're breaking them and uh, dumping them onto this hopper for the screw to put in the tank. Kind of interesting. Now, I don't know if I can get out of here. There, this is a, this one shows uh, the, the, what's underneath the track for the two uh, gates on the cement hoppers. And there's a boot there, you can see where they can pull up over the gate so you don't get cement pouring all over hell. <laughs> uh, this is the original ice house for the trolley. Uh, down in South uh, East Mason City. Uh, you can see some armor cars there that are gonna get ice. This building is long gone. Uh, this is a load that uh, had a, a little rough handling. <laughs> uh, there's some freight cars in here that um, uh, evidently were photos that were taken by uh, uh, Sanford Lock, and there must have been some damage done to these cars, so he would take pictures for insurance purposes. Um, but I, this is a, a great uh, uh, M53. This is not in Mason City, but it's a neat picture. <laughs> uh, this is not here either. Uh, back to Mason City. Here's the 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 Great Western and the Rocca, this would be the, the transfer at Clear Lake Junction, and they're coming up and going this way. Northwestern is coming from over there. Um, I'm, I'm not sure where Milwaukee would be coming across right here. And these would be some of those brickyard plants. Looking the other way at the same, basically the same thing. Here's some of the brickyards over here. Same photo again, or one just about like it. 
These are, this would be during World War II. This would have been a uh, metal drive. Uh, so you can see they've got all kinds of trash in the car yet. These guys are bringing, they've gone out and they've collected everything they can and are throwing it in this gondola. And this is right down uh, in the Milwaukee by their, by their engine, by, excuse me, by their uh, freight house. And one thing that people who model, this would be in the 40s, but even into the 50s, if you look at these houses back here, look at this stuff. It's not neat. The last yeah. thing you need is a neat model railroad. Then you can't make it filthy enough. Uh, here's an early uh, uh, guy pouring a street. Oh, this car, this is up at Northfield, but it's a photo of a Great Western uh, bulkhead flat uh, with a uh, uh, wallboard on it from Fort Dodge. <laughs> uh, these are photos. This would be a, this is a Chicago Great Western. It's part of their, probably part of their wreck train, my guess. And this would be that wreck train in use. Um, I believe this is the bridge over Willow Creek, but I, I don't think so. I, I, I don't think it might not be in Mesa City. What we're looking at here, I got to get my bearings as my house is up here somewhere. But um, this, this is the Great West Rock Island Depot. This is a, a lumber yard still there. And if there was that tower, it would be up here out of sight. But this is the Great Western's coaling tower. The Northwestern is running along here, and they will cross right up out of the picture. I don't know if we've, here's another picture. This one is, I could blow this one up, but do I want to do that? Uh, but this shows, here's the Great, here's the Northwestern Depot. Their line coming up and crossing and going to their yard up here. This is the Great Western Rock Island Depot. And their line comes up and crosses and goes that way. Then the Great Western and the Rock Island come off and come back down this way. This is the Great Western Freight House. They stopped here, but you can see the Rock Island keeps going. They go down quite a bit further yet. And then up here, the Northwestern comes off and runs up this way, crossing this line up to the cement plants. So it's a neat area. Uh, Great Western Crosswalk, Cross Bucks. This is the same one. We've looked at these. Mm. This would be a new switcher just coming to town. And uh, everybody's got to be congratulating each other. <laughs> these are some uh, alcos. They used to run up from Belle Plaine on the Northwestern, and they would always use alcos. And these are some alcos that didn't make it. Ooh, I can't remember. This is somewhere southeast of here. And the Northwestern. Yeah, second one. That would be their passenger service through here. Uh, mm -hmm. One of their box cars. This would be, yeah, 67. Because uh, this car would be in that uh, more maroon color with uh, yellow stencil. And this is the beauty here. I'm waiting for some resin company to make this. <laughs> That's yeah. a nice car. And then here's a bunch of their cement hoppers. What's interesting here is they have this emblem is, is white and black, which is kind of unusual. You can see it better at this, this photo. one of their USRA gondolas. This is that same wreck. It was at uh, Airedale. Uh, the depot didn't like it. I hope that it was at night. So I, oh, I'm hoping the agent wasn't in his bay window. <laughs> and this one shows where there was, they had something piled up in here. It left its mark on the, on the interior of the car. <laughs> this is down like at Gilmore City or someplace on the Emmett St. Al, where they loaded a lot of aggregate out of here. In the Emmett St. Al days, I've got information uh, from conductor's logs where any open car they got up in, in uh, Minnesota they sent down here. 
this is at Alexander, Iowa, on the on the Belma on the Hampton branch. Yep. <laughs> and this is, I believe, Hampton, Iowa. And this is Hampton also. In later days. Yes. Yep. I, I believe this is Hampton also. There must be a bunch of these. Now we're back to Mason City. Okay. Earlier, let me get my bearings. Okay. Here's the Milwaukee Freight House. So that photo we saw of that uh, World War II uh, drive, that car would have been spotted somewhere over here, probably back off the, the photo to the lower left. And we can see the Northwestern Freight House here, uh, the Rock Island Freight House here. This is the Rock Island line that I showed you earlier. Comes all the way down and goes all the way back up here. The Northwestern line comes off over here and comes down this way off their main line here. <clears throat> um, this is a better picture. Yeah, you can see where these houses are back here. So this is where that that car would have been, that gondola would have been setting. It's back over here somewhere. Yep. And there's the Western Grocer building and the switchback that comes into it and the Milwaukee Freight House. And yeah. We're just... Clark, Clark, yeah. One. Uh, back one, go, this one go, go backwards. Well, I can see it. One there. more. You see the gas? Is that the gas plant right there? And the yes, this would have been the old natural gas plant they made. This is where they would keep the coal, and they had a little bitty engine. I don't know. If, uh, I know Soft took a picture of it that would run back and forth right over here. They had their own captive hopper cars, and they'd fill them up with coal here, and then run them back and forth across the street. Hmm. This would go away in more modern. When is, this is from 52. I'm surprised that's still there because I don't remember seeing it. I just remember uh, this cooling tower out here in Willow Creek. <laughs> of course, this was further south than, than uh, where we lived at the time. Uh, another photo, yeah, because where I lived when that other railroad was back over here somewhere. Probably right back here. This I thought was a neat picture, though, because one thing you don't get with uh, with with uh, ready to run turnouts is that is this flow, this track flow that you see here. Mm -hmm. This is a wreck on the Emmett St. L. I think. No, this is a yeah. It's on Crystal Lake, uh, on the Emmett St. L. in in this. And I, I lost the date. But anyway, it's on the line going from Albert Lee to Fort Dodge. And that's a nice car. Oh, that is nice. Another picture of it. And that's too small to look at. Well, we're back to Deckers again. We just looked at a bunch of these, so we'll skip over them. This is looking at it from the other side. This is right down in the plant. This is these are the two tracks that they would uh, went into the plant for loadout. This is down in the south end of the middle yard. Um, this engine had hit a vehicle. This is somewhere else. It's not made close. Oh, it uh, Guilford, Iowa, wherever the hell that's at. South of Eldora. Okay. And then this is a publicity shot taken. Uh, I think this woman's name is Marjorie. I can't remember the name of the horse right now, uh, but you can see There's she Roger. wasn't going to ride the horse in those shoes. Roger, yes. Roger the horse. Marjorie the girl. And maybe Vaughn Ward is one of these guys. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but there, that's the time freight heading south. This is a photo of them. Uh, the Milwaukee laid some trackage into the West East Park. And that's how they got what they're doing here now is their temporary track. And they're pushing that car back in there, that engine back in. And you can see they've got a couple of cars here as idlers so they don't have to worry about the weight of the switch engine. This is downtown on the Milwaukee. 
uh, this is a lot of neat stuff down here. Uh, they had a lot of trackage that ran back and forth um, to the west of their engine of their freight house. Uh, got more stuff on that somewhere. Uh, so I'm saying I'll engine over at the Northwestern Yard after the merger. Another picture of it. Uh, this is the old fairgrounds. When I first came to town and was in the Boy Scouts, I remember one time coming down here and being a usher into the grandstands for a stock car race. But I'm sure in, back here, you can see all the brickyards. And the trolley comes across the way. There's a tower right there, but it's not the one that Doug had a picture of. That's where the Northwestern and the trolley cross. And trolley comes down this way. This is Jackson School, which was torn down to put the McDonald's there. Oh. And the, you, can, you can see where the trolley used to turn and go uptown when they were still running trolley cars. But that was torn up in 36. And this is from 39. So maybe these fairgrounds, they look like they're pretty new. And then another picture of a uh, uh, female downtown. Here's a, another picture of it. This stuff's all still there. This has been torn down and replaced with a, a newer elevator, but this building is still there. These are. This would be earlier. You can see this car was hit by the train um, before they clad the building. There's no silos behind it yet. And off in the distance to the left is the Emmons St. L. Gantry. Um, yeah, that's the crane that was down there. Yeah. yeah that would have been down by 4th Street. Mm -hmm. The same, they had the same one in Marshalltown. Had one in Albia. That was their standard design. So, yeah. Okay. This is a. This is some kind of a feed operation or elevator down in Fort Dodge, brand new, in '60. So it's probably has uh, uh, to do with uh, fertilizer too. This is that same plant being built. Um, this is a car. You can see it's been damaged right here. Okay, this is this is the south end of that middle yard. This house is still there, um, but it kind of shows uh, the foundry that's set here. I could blow, I've blown this up so I could build some of these buildings, but I'm not going to attempt that again. Uh, this is not, a, this is in uh, St. Paul. Uh, they had a clearance problem. Um, <laughs> more cars in Mesa. This is 68, so you're getting some uh, uh, newer cars. This would be maybe for fertilizer for out uh, at Swift. I'm not sure. Could be LP. These cars became quite uh, quite common. This is up at Northwood. This is the Emmett St. Now Gas Electric. And it looks like, I can't, that's a they got a box car on behind the coach, so they must be hauling extra baggage. Or is that one of those converted troop sleepers? Nope, that's a box car. Yeah, it could be. Uh, no, it looks like outside. This is at Eldora. Uh. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. Uh, General Mills, um, this is out. Um, uh, West of uh, the creamery that Jay, that uh, uh, Doug showed, I do believe that's where this is at. <laughs> uh, more cars, freight cars. I always keep every freight car. This is down at. Uh, I'm not sure where this is at Hampton, but I had to have it because of the the. Oh wow! Yeah, that's really cool for a coal shed. Those are still standing in Hampton. Yeah, I bet they're not painted like that. No, they're not painted like that. They're just plain yeah. gray. But yeah, yeah this is that uh, that uh, ramp that Doug showed earlier, what where they had the the end loader and the truck backed up to it. Mm -hmm. There's a the whole thing. Yep. And now we're at a uh, different uh, home insulation company. <laughs> Another box car. 
This is a coal shed, I'm not sure where. This is at Allied Mills. It's, some of this building is still here. This was quite a big place up uh, to just to the west of the Northwestern Yard. Uh, but you can see here, this is a fertilizer dealer. This would be the building here. There's the Northwestern Yard cement plant up here. Mm -hmm. Decker's over here. All right, this is the Lehigh again. They were kind of interested. They had a Y in that plant here. So you could get at it from either way. This was a this was the yard that was the joint uh Emma St. Al Great Western Yard. And then back past this pooling pond, there was another yard that was the Northwesterns where they stored cars. And this is the the Great Western Rock Island North South one. Nowadays, it's called the Spine Line. CUP runs it. Another picture of Lehigh from the other direction. This, this one here, yeah, they've got a new kiln in over here, I believe, that wasn't in before. This is a later photo, 60. Okay. Uh, this is Lehigh in 88. We're getting, we've gone to color now. But you can see that yard down here, joint yard, and then the Lehigh's yard. Uh, they had a switch engine they could put cars in, in yeah. and out of there. Okay, this is uh, a bagging machine over at Lehigh, and this is back when they were using cloth bags. This is 1940, and they were still using cloth sacks. Um, so what would happen is the guy, you can see there's a shoe right here that comes out and there's these two wheels. So he'd shove this on and he'd hit a button up here and this would clamp down and cement would pour out of the end of this tube and it, the, the bag would fill and set in the saddle. And this was adjusted for a certain weight. When it got to a certain weight, these clamps would come undone. This would tip over and the bag would fall on a conveyor and be hauled away. I'm extremely familiar with these. This is a, <laughs> this is a car over at Lehigh. Uh, in in paper bag days, uh, loaded box car. Then another picture showing the the pallet machine would put all those bags on. This is inside Lehigh. This is kind of interesting. It's like earlier we saw that that MSNL being loaded at Northwestern States. We can see here we got a uh, this is their pack house or their their storage silos or storage, flat storage. And you can see there's a tube coming down in the car and this guy's paying careful attention. Then over here is where they would unload their coal. And up here, they would have a, a, a car shaker that they would let down on top of the car. And it, it had a, a motor with a shaft that had an eccentric on it. So it just rattled like crazy and uh, shake any cement that was in the car out or any uh, coal or, or there you see the, the things down on top of the car in this picture. There's the motor there. This is inside uh, those storages where I was saying that they got to push all of this cement over to uh, over uh, spouts that'll let it put, put it into screws that eventually will get it to where they can put it in something to take it away. Fine job to have on a nice summer day. <laughs> This would be, uh, this is Kells and Lehigh back in the old days when they were all enclosed. You go down south, all the kilns are outside. There's a reason for that. It's hotter than hell in these places. Uh, this would be another shot at, at uh, the bracing over at Lehigh. At the other, where I, where I work, the other cement plant, we had these big, uh, I'll call them for lack of better terms, balloons, really heavy. They had a name, I can't think of it right now. Uh, kind of a, a big heavy bag they fill up with air and a rubber would, bladder yeah a bladder that would be it yep mm. uh this shows them they slip those cells now and they're working up on the top of them uh this would be the, uh a new uh mill a raw mill i would say this is where they would grind up limestone and uh and uh sand and uh Play uh, to make it into powder 
so they could blow it into the kilns. This would be a couple of mills over at Lehigh. Um, I'm thinking these might be, they're either going in or coming out. They did some uh, renovating in the, in the 50s or 60s. This would be that storage that we saw that guy on the on the uh, Caterpillar inside. And then this is where they load out. And this is a great Western car. They're going to load out here. Uh, when they uh, palletized the bag cement that we saw in those cars, this is the building that they did that in. This goes back a few years. This is a uh, Lehigh's quarry back in the day. You can see a little, a little bitty steam engine here, a little tank engine. Uh, for uh, then these cars, these cars were brought over, and there was a tram system. You could see they were were actually uh, not a tram. What do they call a cog railroad. Incline. And they would crank yeah. these things up to the top and then dump them. Mm -hmm. This would be their little. Uh, diesel jobs. Now we're over to the Northwestern States, the other place, and this is their building, uh, their rail silos. This was done in 66. These are air slides. This is a, a lot of the cement was moved in, in these guys here. They had a, uh, this part up here was open, and then this part, there was a canvas in here, and then this little trough underneath, they blow air in, and then make that canvas wiggle like you were shaking a flag, and then that would move the cement along. Here we're laying down that track to put that engine in at East Park. We got some, at least we're not going in alphabetical order. Okay, this is that engine in service. Uh, I don't know when or where, uh, maybe Fort Dodge. Uh, this is one of their Mercados coming into Mason City. Another one of their consolidations, a different one. Let me see that one. This is the Emmons St. L. Uh, up here is Andrew's cement of concrete we looked at earlier. Their engine house is here, depot down here. We pretty much covered that. Here's Decker's here. That depot area is right here. Uh, Willow Creek, they cross here. So you can see the reason the there's an offset in the railroad is because of the Winnebago River. If the river had been way over here someplace, this line would have went straight. Um, way south, looking north. Um, down here, this is the interchange with the trolley in the end of St. L. Here's the interchange with the Milwaukee. Uh, and then this is where those rip tracks would have been. Line going to Albert Lee or up to Austin goes up this way. Another shot of downtown and, and St. Al. Another one, another one. Um, back to Hampton again. Another <laughs> one of those. Okay, this would have been the last train, the last passenger train um, out of Mesa City, uh, southbound. Uh, you, this is one of those troop cars here, or one of those, uh, might not have been, might have been one of their uh, aluminum box cars. I think that's what it is for baggage. But you can see they're no longer taking a coach. They have a baggage comp uh, passenger compartment in the gas electric. Uh, the middle yard that we talked about is here. That foundry that I showed you earlier is right there. <laughs> Uh, again, we're looking now we're in south. This is you can see the trolley overhead wires. There's there are two of their tracks that they have access to. Uh, the third track here for the M St. L to store cars on. Uh, this was originally built as uh uh oh crap. Out of the cities, uh, one of the flower companies or uh, uh, Pillsbury built this. And then it was bought, when we moved to Mesa City, it would just been bought out by uh, a building supply company. Uh, this is a Northwestern States when they're actually putting in that kiln we looked at pieces of before. They've got it put together and that's right here. Uh, 
10 foundry we talked about a little bit. Okay, <laughs> back over here again. Here's the Great Western Rock Island Depot, the Northwestern Depot. Um, here's that track, the, the Rock Island, uh, the Great Western's freight house. That track, the Rock Island would come down and turn and go down here to the freight house. They had all kinds of other stuff here too. And here's the Northwestern track coming off, turning and going down to their, uh, they have some customers down here and their freight house down here. There's that gas plant back here with the power plant and the Milwaukee store. Uh, this would be uh, Lehigh again, I think. I'm not sure. This is this is the original Emmett St. L coming into Northwestern States. This is Northwestern States powerhouse. They came in over this wood trestle. The, the road, Highway 65 is down here. They widened the highway in 53 and they tore this trestle out. And that's when they came in from off that other yard over at Lehigh. I know I had that one. This one we looked at with the Kennedy cars. There's the ice house again. Those cars are probably going out to uh, the creamery. Trolley, oh, these are old trolleys. Mm -hmm. Here's the tower uh, with the trolley across the Northwestern. They have bang boards there too, which is kind of, they stayed for years. They're not there anymore. Um, what's interesting here, so everybody can see the numbers, they they cobbled up these not number boards, and didn't use those. This is, a, this is a, a Milwaukee freight. I believe, I, ca I can't tell you where this is at. I thought I knew, but I'm not gonna say. Another car that was damaged here. Milwaukee. You can buy these cars from, from really nice cars, but they come with littering on them. <laughs> Uh, Milwaukee, this is not a USRA car. This is a car that Westerfield makes. Inside a box car. This is the Milwaukee turntable, their, their, their engine house and their station over here. This is looking down on the Milwaukee yard. Uh, here's their turntable engine house. Uh, this is their rip over here. They would store their locomotives right in here. And this is the yard, Evan St. L is back here. This is the track that goes downtown to their freight house. This is looking at, the, at their yard looking west uh, from Carolina. This is the track that would come back to the Evan St. L and the trolley. And there was a, 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 a stock burgers had a, a stock pens over here. There was a track right here to them, you can see. Another picture of their yard. And another picture. This is a good picture if you because it shows stock burgers there. Um where earlier I showed you those pictures of those uh early cement hoppers and those batch mixes, they were right in here. This is the scrap dealer here, and it's kind of interesting because it looks like one of those batch mixers might still be sitting there being used for something else. Uh, here's an, another better picture of that gas plant, uh, Milwaukee Freight House, Rock Island, Northwestern. Whoops, I gotta answer the phone door. <laughs> Looks like another view of the gas plant in the Milwaukee Freight House. You can see the angle on the Western Grocer building over to the left side there. So you're looking you're looking north in this photo. So okay, somebody looking for my wife and she ain't here. She knew they were coming. This is uh the the tracks down at the Milwaukee Freight House. You can see that that gas 
jobby back there. This is an older from 35. So you're getting a lot of older cars here. Another picture. I fiddle with some of these is why there's more than one picture we're seeing. Yeah, this is a, a way up shot showing where everything's located at. Now, what's interesting about this picture is way down here is there's a barn right here. And we live just on the other side of this barn. And when I was building my railroad, I had no idea. I remember the barn, but I don't remember what it looked like. And one day I'm looking at this picture and I see it and I zoom in and I already built the barn and didn't look anything like the real one. So I had to make it over again. <laughs> You also see the platform there for the, to the left. Yeah, and this is uh, North Iowa Co-op. That's mm. uh, what I, where that this is out behind uh, the bean plant today. Uh, you would never know it was there uh, on unless you happen to be back there on the railroad to see it or drive back there. Back to the cement plants again. They've got that kiln in and operating. Sixty eight year before I came there. Uh, co pile, extra co piles out here, um, where they used to dump this stuff out. There was a one light, an incandescent light there, and they were always breaking that. And it was such a pain in the ass to dig out the old socket and put in a new bulb because you had to reach out the window. Never mind, not for one story. Okay, this is uh, uh, Northwestern Distributing down on the Emmett St. Out. Just the south of the depot. There's another. There's a good shot. The MSL Freight House is right over here. Another picture here. You can see where the elevator is. And some before our uh, government got involved, you can see they've got ladders on top of the car so they can get up on the roof. <laughs> and then this is what happens uh, to the feed mill when they catch fire. This place burned down at least twice. The third time they never rebuilt it. This is up at uh, Northwood, Iowa, on the Emmons St. Out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is looking south towards uh, Mason City's down there, about 20 miles. And another shot up there. This is the Rock Island, I think. Yeah, this is the Rock Island. Here's the highway. This is um, what's interesting is they're tearing this plant down now. And this is when they're building this bag house or dust collector. And now it, it's gone, I think. I believe they've torn all this stuff down. The kiln is down. This would be the first low truckload of cement out of the cement plant legally. And this would have been at the end of 1960. That's when the first, up until this time period, uh, December 29th, 1960, all cement was hauled in rail cars out of in Iowa. And now this is 66, they built these, these silos to put the uh, load rail cars in. And as you can see, they're shoving in a Northwestern car uh, to load for the first time. Here's another string. This is one of their 44 tonners. These things were uh, silver and, and red with the yellow stripes on the ends. And you can see they've got a, a, quite a string of, of cars there. Might be publicity shot, not sure. This goes back a million years. It says 1908. That's when the cement plant was first built. And this is the Great Western backing into the cement plant. And they've got a bunch of suckers here trying to invest in the plant. And this is again, uh, now you can see that that overpass has been torn out or that trestle has been torn down. <laughs> Another one. Oh, this is, here's that, uh, that picture that Doug showed. There's another car sitting there to be loaded in this pack house. 
Uh, the mill building is where all the mills were. Uh, Truckload up to the mill railroad, what, 65. They haven't even started on the rail one, it looks like. And this would be early bags. You can see there's no palletizing machine. So they're uh, trucking all the bags onto this truck and lay, laying them out. They have a tarp up here. I'm sure they're going to cover the, the bags with. Uh, this is where they would dry the clay. Um, the clay, this is like a kiln, and the, there's a burner in here, and this clay comes in like this from out of uh, clay fields, and it's blue clay, and you can see it's big chunks, and it's, it's going to have moisture in it, and they need to, they crush it up, and they uh, screen it, and then they run it through that dryer. And then here you can see uh, where the railroad came down across this is 12th Street. I live over here. Um, the, the, the grade is still here for this track. And they came around and you can see the wall here that they're, they're digging that clay out from. Uh, there's one of their, this is a Whitcomb uh, that was a, a, a military export engine during World War II. Lehigh had one just like it. And here within the last couple years to three years, the one at Lehigh was sent over to Belgium to a museum. This one is long gone. There, it's in use here. And he's got uh, a Jenny's back here. I don't know if they're, they're probably clay at this time period. This would be the control panel for that one of the kilns. The newer, probably this is in 66. This is the control panel for the other kiln that was built. Uh, this picture was taken in 53. By the time when I left, retired, all that was gone and all there was was a desk here with computer screens on it. Uh, here they're loading uh, uh, rock, uh, limestone into these little jennies and here you can see the shade. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Here they're getting ready to load that car. It's still not complete, but this is where they would bring that rock in in big chunks. And this thing down here is uh, kind of like a mortal and pestle. Uh, it, 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 there's just a little crack down here. This thing's vi rotating kind of in a figure eight. And then this is these walls come down to a point at the bottom. And there's a little crack down there. And I've said there more. They've dropped rocks in there as big as a, as a Volkswagen. And this thing keeps chugging away. And eventually they break. You'll see them crack. And then they'll break and just fall through the hole. And it's really, it's really interesting. There's another shot of that with uh, actually the cars up here at that time. In my day, this was all truck. Another older shot. This is one of the inside of one of the kilns. This is about three fourths or maybe further back in the kiln. They're blowing coal in this thing to get it up to 2200 degrees. And they don't want that heat to just go out the other end. So they hang these chains in there. These chains are about 10, 12 foot long. And that's a curtain and it's supposed to hold the heat in from going back any further. I can tell you we've weighed some, used some of these uh, chains uh, to uh, calibrate scales with and it ain't light. I felt sorry for the guys that had to carry these things in and hang them. Of course, they didn't hang them. They put them on down here for the kill, but still. Heavy duty. We've seen that one. Uh, that's more cement plants. This is that back in the day when that uh, uh, trestle was still in place, a uh, car fell off. And I asked the back when I was studying this, all this railroad stuff, I was talking to a, a retired MSNL guy and I asked him about this. And he says, I know nothing. But there was a switch way back up here. And I think that this car picked the switch and eventually <laughs> fell off. How they ever picked it up, I don't know. It's a Penzi car, so they might as well junk it anyway. It's an X31. <laughs> and this is uh, their, the machine shop there. And they would put cars back here. You can see boxcars. They would load boxcars with cement. And there was like a pool. If if they called your railroad and said, 
We've got eight cars of uh, bags for you today. We need eight empties. And so you would just take them eight empties and they would fill them in. and you would not get back what you sent them. Uh, here they're in the, this is in 53. Uh, they're taking, this is much smaller kilns in those days. Uh, they're putting a tire on a, a new kiln and they're doing it all with rail at this time. Uh, this is where they used to, you can see that rock pressure is here. Well, this is a new system they were putting in. Uh, this is a dust collector uh, in here. Right here is a crusher. This thing would have big hammers in it that would turn around and smash the rocks up from uh, what they would go through a screen up here. And uh, oh, this is another dust collector. Excuse me, the screens are down here. Um, and it would it would crush them up into maybe fist sized pieces or smaller. And then they would go up and go back down through the screens and then go the other way. Made a lot of noise. These would be old kilns. This is from 55. These are kilns they've probably taken out and are replaced with newer ones. This would be the packing. This would be the uh, palletizer building for Northwestern states. Uh, their palletizer. This uh, gallon over this galleyway here is conveyor belts bringing uh, bag cement over and, and putting it down into there where they can uh, palletize it and then store it. You can see boxcars here where they would uh, load the stuff. Here's the palletizer machine. Here's the, the bags coming down from above. Uh, been up and down that a few times. Um, and then this is uh, over in the pack house. Again, uh, we're, at paper, we're at 58 uh, paper sacks now. Um, these guys would get really fast. Uh, so when, <laughs> there were some young guys working in night shift years ago and would try and get, go so fast that they would plug up the, pa the palletizer machine so they could take a break, have a beer or two. But what's interesting about this is how many of you remember the Paladin show that was on before Gunsmoke? Oh, yes. Have Gun Will have Travel. Have Gun Will Travel. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be from this time period, 58. Uh, this would be uh, their quarry system. This would be, uh, this was taken in 65. So this is not next to the cement plant. This is a few miles north of Mason City. Uh, looking at electrical conduit, uh, spout for loading in that rail silos. Yeah, this is a closer view. This thing here can turn 90 degrees on this on this I beam, and then there was a hoist here to let this up and down, and so they could they they put a big piece of uh, of uh, foam on here to seal the car when they blew the cement into it. Another picture of those two silos. <laughs> this is part of the scale system that was underneath there. This is a how scale. Uh, there were big, huge beams that ran on top of these guys to the other end of this. This thing was, you couldn't stand up in here. Um, but they could load the car and weigh it at the same time, which is a big improvement. Here you can see the, the hole back here where they're putting all the stuff. Here's the Shea again, pushing in uh, limestone. Wow, yeah. There's their pretty engines. They're clean, which is odd. Here's a guy trucking... Uh, cement from the from the packing machine into a box car before the palletizer. And this is one that Doug showed, but what I always liked about this is you all know what an X29 box car is, which would be this one. Well, this one's real similar. This is an M26, which is really similar. But you have cars of basically the same design from three different railroads next to each other. <laughs> The interior of one New York Central car. This is a piece of the kiln. This is how uh, big the sections would come in. Then they'd weld them all together. This is that uh, when they first built that Pillsbury warehouse, the M and St. Alp had to put a track in here, and somebody goofed up. And when they brought the first car in to unload it, the the railroad track was too low. So they had to bring in enough cinders to raise the track up an inch and a half. <laughs> There's a picture of the building. 
you know, another Penzi car, Penzi cars. You know, if you model anything, you model Penzi. I'm not sure where this is at, but again, you got some brave souls painting, you know, hand painting on the elevator, which I thought was nice. <laughs> the MSNO Middle Yard again in 64. This was a, a customer in that middle yard. Now we got the Rock Island and Vinton. I don't know how that got in there. <laughs> We're at Birchnell. This is on our way up to Mesa City. We're about five miles south. This is the Glenville, Minnesota. This is about 23 miles north of Mesa City. And this one didn't go any further than this. This was at, a, at, at a, uh, Owatonna, Minnesota. <laughs> Uh, this is an Enver Grove, Minnesota, back down to Mesa City again. These pictures are all seen. This is up at uh, Owatonna, a single F unit on a train. This is a Milwaukee or the Rock Island Freight House in Northfield, Minnesota. There's that uh, car I showed you earlier that I had blown up and, and picked out of this photo uh, of unloading it. Enver Grove again. I don't know why these are in here. Uh, this is in Garner, Iowa, which is kind of unusual to see um, a switch engine on the main line. Rockford, Iowa. Uh, here we're in Mesa City. This, this building is still here, but this track is gone. This was a produce, uh, Zanius produce. And now it's... Uh, uh, it was a uh, crap. It's a a bakery and and a sandwich place. They did. They just sold it to somebody else. I can't think of the name of it. Down at the depot. Piece of kiln shell again. These coming in in uh, halves. There's another picture of it. This is over to Milwaukee Yard because they would have come from Milwaukee, of course. Back to the depot. One of those early. TAs was that, I think. I think that's right. Here's a, another one. This is inside the Amasano uh, engine house. Why this picture was taken, I don't know. I thought this one was nice. This is a, I don't know where this is at. I think it's up in Canada, probably. It is, Everett Baker up in Saskatchewan. Okay. Another car in Mesa. I built one of these. I don't think I have it anymore. Uh, this is state brand here. And we talked about those other places. You see the tracks come off the Great Western, come up here. This is where uh, I said you had to go back and things to find it. That's the place. Creamery again. Mm -hmm. Another picture of the creamery. There's nothing over here at this time. This is 1946. What's interesting is a Great Western could come in from behind. And the guy that was in uh, owned the trolley was there one day when the Great Western came in to switch with a steam engine and smoke was going through the building. And uh, he told them, you know, he says, if word got out about all that smoke coming into your butter, that would not be good. I think it would be much better if one of our clean electric engines did your <laughs> switching from now on. And as you can see, <laughs> tracks over there it's another uh coal shed from somewhere here's some more of those oh i i stopped last saturday and measured these uh the size of those panels they're five foot wide and eight foot tall mm -hmm. within inches not sure what this is since i have a coal bin yep inside of a coal it bin at a green Stuart, elevator. Illinois. Back up to the, back up to the um, bean plant or the sugar beet uh, with no with no beets, mm -hmm. and the swift plant. Now there you can see there's some of the the tanks over here for the anhydrous. Yeah, okay. Well, anhydrous, they call it ammonia. And this is when they're building the place, which is kind of interesting. You get to see some of what's inside of it. Ooh. Some of these pictures, there it's finished. Um, but here you can see they've got a kiln in there for drying stuff, several elevators so they can transport stuff around. 
bags in a box and 44, we got cloth bags in there for something. This is, um, they were doing some asphalt work here in town. And this is down on the, the yard behind the Rock Island Freight House. And these are all cars of asphalt. And this is the, they, they put a hose in the top. And then this is the machine that would get the stuff out. You can see they have another hose in the bottom. Now, one way or another, this, this thing here has got a pump and it's got a burner on it. So they're either pumping in hot stuff or they're, do, they're doing something to be able to warm this stuff up to get it out. I, I would like to know what these machines do because there are several pictures where you see these things. They've got a tank on them and they've got a motor for a, a pump, a gas motor for a pump. And then they must, they, they've got a burner on here. This be a boiler. Uh, I don't know exactly how they work, but uh, you got to have some kind of heat to get the product out of those cars. And here you can see there's quite a few of them there. Wow. Hmm. And this is a wreck on uh, Emmett St. L. Um, I think up by Manly. Says a Rockwell. Okay. Okay, Rockwell. Well, this is, earlier, Doug was talking about this bridge up here with all this track work on it. Well, this is a 1939. You can see there's a grade crossing here. But the highway, the street used to come down right through Deckers, down here, make a turn, and go over a bridge over here. Well, they built this new bridge in 1939 that's still there and usable. And then they took, they put an underpass up here. So now this is direct route. This was torn down and this road was closed through the plant. Yeah, this shows another picture of the new bridge there. This is the water treatment plant and that track that came off and would come back down here uh, for what they needed. Where's that one again? Oh, this would be back to the insulation guy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it. I'm done. No more. <laughs> All right. oh, great. Wonderful. Great stuff, guys. Thank you. That was awesome. Yeah. Can I ask one question on the beet plant? Is Saks the only way they went out or did it go out in other forms? In the later they, days, they would use air slides and, and put uh, bulk sugar in them. But this sugar. time, in, in the earlier than that, everything went by boxcar and bags. Okay. So the did sugar they also, would be, Did they do barrels? They could, yeah, before that, sure, I'm sure they did. Okay. That's why if you look Thanks. at it's cement plants emblems, most of them are round because they were stamped on the top of barrels. When I first oh. started working at the cement plant, the stuff was sold by barrels. It was like, I can't remember. That's why a bag of cement weighs 94 pounds because there were four bags to a barrel. Mm -hmm. So you can figure out how much a barrel weighed. 388, I think. Something, yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, we lost some people along the way. Uh, we went for an hour and a half or so. So, <laughs> but, uh, well, you should have shut us off. Oh no, I was enjoying it. Good, it was good. We're not meeting at, uh, tonight afterwards, so we we had that ability to do that. So that's great. Thanks, gentlemen. Uh, we oh, are yeah. open next week. Uh, we do not have anybody presenting yet. So if anybody's interested, let me know. Um, the week after that, let's see here. The week after that, we're off for Memorial Day weekend, and then uh, we'll have Dave Fondness on September 7th and Lester on the 14th. Uh, I could. I've got two presentations on my old layout on Mesa City. Why all right, why don't we do that? If you want to do one of those next week, we can do that. Yeah, let's do that. We'll stick with the Mesa City theme. Yeah, and then we'll be all done with that. <laughs> well, actually, I could, do two, I could do a whole bunch because I've got probably 10 or 12 PowerPoints on my own layout. But, <laughs> but we won't bore everybody to death. So we'll that's do, we'll just do yeah. an hour's worth next week. Yeah, yeah. You'll have to do it without me because I'm, I'll be on my way to Colorado next Thursday. So All right. Yeah. Well, enjoy yourself.
I will. Oh, is that the uh, is that the uh, national convention? Nash, uh, national narrow gauge. Oh, okay. Denver. Right. Yeah. Very good. Well, enjoy that, gentlemen. Thanks for joining us, and uh, oh. we'll look forward to next week with Clark again. Yeah, great stuff, Clark. Thanks, Clark. Yeah, yeah, wonderful job. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.